Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It is January 8th. Glad you are with us on this Friday morning. We're going to talk about your weekend forecast coming up. We are now about a week into the new year and we continue to have perspective or retrospective rather on how COVID has affected our nation and our communities. And we have an interesting article written by a doctor out of New York State. Her name is Dr. Edith Bracco Sanchez and she has an interesting perspective on how the pandemic has worsened an already dire childhood obesity epidemic. She writes that they've seen over and over in the last few months, kids who have put on five, sometimes 10, even 20 pounds since the onset of the pandemic. The specifics leading to weight gain vary. Sometimes it's dad who recently took over cooking and maybe overfeeding the kids. Other times it's grandma who has been spoiling them now that they're home. For still others, favorite sports are no longer an option or they've stopped going outside altogether. Oh, real quick, I'm, you know, experiencing this at home. My, my daughter, uh, we're at home and sometimes she says, hey, can I have a cookie? And I'm like, yeah, sure, because you've been through a lot. Uh, so it's something that I need to track more. And also she's not playing basketball anymore. So I see it personally as well. Some of the other things the doctor talks about in this column, she talks about how there's been now a deprivation of nutrition and activity and how that's affected kids. Uh, also seeing higher rates of obesity in these children in some communities, especially children of color. And so the doctor also says that previously healthy kids are getting sick. She says over the last few months, our clinics have filled with previously healthy children who now have high blood pressure, elevated markers for prediabetes and diabetes. And finally, she says mental health issues have made things worse. You know, depression can make it very difficult to plan meals, just like anxiety can at times lead to overeating. So the, her recommendation really is, is kind of a touch point for uh, leaders throughout our communities and throughout our nation. Yeah, she says uh, that she depends on our foresight, investment, and commitment for now, according to the doctor. She says we need to do something now. For instance, she says uh, schools will need to improve and sustain funding if they are to provide healthy school meals to the many children who have spent the better part of 2020 at home. She says we must also find ways to keep afloat the many small, small primary care offices across the country to provide primary care services and service safety nets for the most vulnerable among us. But she says even though vaccines on the way, the end pandemic pandemic seems tangible, the consequences of the disruption to life will stay with us for years to come. So yeah, she says the health of a generation of children depends on our foresight, investment and commitment right now, according to Dr. Edith Bracco Sanchez. That's right. Interesting insight from a pediatrician there in New York State. Let's take a look at today's nine at nine. Bear County continues to see a rise in COVID-19 cases. Local health officials said 1,100 people tested positive for the virus in the last 24 hours. The seven-day average remains at more than 1,500 cases a day. Nine new deaths were also reported. University Health is hoping to get more doses of the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as next week. Metro Health is also gathering information on where people can get vaccinated and provide that information in one place. Plans to launch a website once our region receives more doses. A search is underway for missing 15-year-old Samantha Andutan. She was last seen on January 3rd in the 12,000 block of Lone Star Leaf. Anyone found to be harboring Samantha may face charges for harboring a runaway, which is punishable up to one year in jail with a fine of up to $5,000. Anyone with any information on her whereabouts, they are asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. An Iraqi judge has issued an arrest warrant for President Donald Trump in the death of an Iraqi military leader killed during the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani just over a year ago. Iran has also issued an arrest warrant for President Trump over the results of the targeted airstrike. Bear County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant Roxanne Mathai is under investigation both criminally and administratively after posting multiple pictures on Facebook showing her near the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday. Mathai was pictured in a red, white and blue mask and draped in a President Donald Trump flag. The FBI is looking for the person or persons responsible for placing pipe bombs outside the Democratic and Republican National Committee offices on Wednesday. The agency released this bulletin. It's offering up to $50,000 for information on a suspect or suspects. President Donald Trump's attempt to overturn the election appears to be over after he posted a video online last night. My campaign vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. The message came nearly 30 hours after the Capitol was stormed by his supporters in D.C. He also remains banned from Facebook, at least until his term ends. 
President-elect Joe Biden has nominated Judge Merrick Garland to be Attorney General. Garlic was also President Obama's pick for the U.S. Supreme Court, but that was blocked by Republicans. Biden says Garland would be loyal to the Constitution, not to him. And SpaceX founder Elon Musk overtook Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' status as the world's richest person. According to Bloomberg, Musk now has $190 billion in wealth and Bezos has $187 billion. And that's today's Nine at Nine. It's hard to fathom that kind of fortune, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, either way, they're both in a good place. <laughs> Who cares? First or second. Place. Yeah. 903, let's go outside with live cam. It's been a chilly start to our Friday morning. It has. Uh, temperatures were in the 30s earlier. We're now in the 40s. We're starting to see things warm up, and it will turn into a fairly nice day this afternoon. Maybe not as warm as yesterday. Right now, we're sitting at 42, as I mentioned. Northerly winds at about 9 miles per hour, which means we have a wind chill in a few spots. And the uh, temperatures today should make it into the upper 50s, close to 60 a little bit later this afternoon with mostly sunny skies. Uh, let's take a look at the pollen count. At this was surprising to me. Good news. Mountain cedar is down, still in the high category, but it's down from where it was yesterday. 2,640 mold is in the low category at 190. Temperature wise, still below freezing and comfort, but most everybody else has risen above that number. 37 Bull Verde, 44 New Braunfels, 39 Canyon Lake. Here's the all important weekend forecast. If you're looking ahead, increasing clouds tomorrow, 56, but 45 on Sunday, 80% chance of showers. Still could see a few snowflakes mixing in across the hill country, but the bottom line, a blustery, cold, wet day on Sunday. Guys. We will prepare. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Trans Guide, looking at 410 and 151. Things looking okay over there for right now. Top stories we're following today. A man remains in the hospital this morning after he was thrown from his vehicle overnight. It happened in the 10,000 block of Shanefield Road around 2 a.m. According to deputies on the scene, the man was at the intersection of Shanefield Road and Cavern Hill when he rolled the vehicle over. Deputies say the man was ejected during the crash and it's unclear exactly what caused the accident. The man was taken to a hospital. His condition is not known at this time. No other injuries were reported. Also in your top stories, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says they have arrested a man accused of shooting and killing two people. 20 year old James Miller was arrested according to an affidavit. Deputies say Miller and another suspect who was already arrested shot and killed a 20 year old man and a 14 year old teen on the northeast side back on December 17th. Deputies say the shooting happened on Rubens Drive near Montgomery and Gibbs Sprawl during a drug deal. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center still in dire need of blood donors. They are in need of all blood types, but especially those with type O. That's what South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is hosting a ninth annual community blood drive at Big Lou's Pizza. It's happening tomorrow from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. Big Lou's Pizza is located at 2048 South WW White Road. Appointments are required. You can schedule your donation by calling 210-731-5590 or visiting SouthTexasBlood.org, they'll be giving a coupon for a free 10-inch one-topping pizza, as well as a Big Lou's Pizza Blood Drive t-shirt. If you've still not gotten a flu vaccine or flu shot, District 5 and Cano Health Clinics is helping people out for free. It's happening right now. No need for prior registration. Vaccines will be available while supplies last. If you'd like to get one, it'll be held at the Cano Health Clinic on South Stars or more this morning. Again, the times are from now until noon. Well, when it comes to questions you may have about the COVID-19 vaccine, KSAT has you covered. Right now on our website, we have the latest on who's getting the vaccine, how to sign up for an appointment, and how much it might cost. In your morning headlines, an update on a woman who falsely claimed a young black man stole her phone in New York. And snow in Spain falls where? And more loose llamas. David Sears is here. What are you talking about? Remember the loose llama after the oh. uh, hurricane? Oh, okay, that yes. Justin yes. got the video. Him, I him do remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, this well, will be interesting. Apparently there's another one. Okay. I'll have it for you just a second first. The woman who is wanted for falsely accusing a 14-year-old of stealing her phone and then physically attacking him while they were in a New York City hotel has been arrested in California. A Ventura County Sheriff's deputy tried to pull her over because of a warrant for her arrest in New York, but she took off. She drove through a neighborhood and then finally stopped in front of a house. Deputies had to physically restrain her because she was resisting arrested, being arrested. She is in jail without bail. She will be returned to New York City to face those assault charges. By the way, she was arrested last year in Beverly Hills, California, for public intoxication. 
Back to the incident in New York. She claimed the black youngster stole her phone. It was actually found in an Uber. All right, if you thought this past year was hot, you're right, at least according to the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service. They say 2020 was a record year. They also tell us that the decade 2010 to 2020 was the warmest decade in history. But here's something interesting about the study. Even though the northern hemisphere was hotter, the southern hemisphere was cooler. Their below average temperatures attributed to La Nina conditions that formed last year. And snow in Spain falls mainly on the plain, something like that. That is snow falling in Spain for the first time in 10 years. Some pretty thick and heavy stuff, perfect for kids. Snowball fights sledding near the city's grandest church. Madrid, not far from the mountains, but it is still unusual to see snow like this sticking to the ground. One woman said she hoped it was a lucky omen that snowy years are prosperous years. And finally, Remember this lady, the lady leading that llama down the street? This was after that hurricane in Orange, Texas. Justin Horn was there along with our photographer, Billy Caldera. They caught that. Well, this is apparently a thing now. Loose llamas going around. There was one spotted lying down in a field in Massachusetts. That's the llama right there. It was in a field next to a busy highway. Passerby got out to scare off some coyotes. Animal control showed up, got him in a trailer. They said it was fairly easy, which was an indication that the llama was probably a pet. We're going to see the one from Orange again. They took that llama up in Massachusetts to a farm in New Hampshire for safety. We've contacted a lot of other farmers in the area, too, that may know of this lone llama. He is living large up there. You know, she sent me videos and pictures of him, and he's laying down, eating a bunch of hay. Living large. A llama living large. Got to love that. Right? So loitering or loose llamas happens a lot. <laughs> Barely a couple of times in the country. And we love the alliteration too. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Kind of fun. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> 9, 10 right now, 42 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A zoo over the pond has quite a task. How many animals workers had to count for the new year? Spurs went up against the Lakers last night. We have highlights of the win and today's Spurs recap coming up and also details on their next game. And Market Square switching things up as renovations are being made after the break. Our Alicia Barrera will be live with all the information you need to know. Let's check stocks right now. The Dow is up only a couple of points at 31,043. They were forced to shut down during the start of the pandemic and now had to move all their merchandise out of stores for renovations. Dozens of shops at the Farmers Market Plaza have made the transition to the Central de Artes building for a chance to make a profit at the pop-up Marco. Alicia Barrera is live from Market Square with more on the changes and how business owners are adapting. Good morning. Well, we all love Market Square because of the sights and even the smells it offers of old Mexico. Of course, this is popular among tourists, but even locals. But there are a few changes. Your chance to shop now will be on this end, West Commerce in Salsa, South Santa Rosa, inside this colorful building. The end of the year came with shocking news for already struggling tenants at the Farmer's Market Plaza, like Veronica Ramirez and her husband. A lot of anxiety because we had already been closed due to COVID. Two and a half to three months, business we lost. Hearing this, that we had to move, that we had, I mean, a lot of people had to move all their things. And so it, it's a lot of anxiety. They had three days to pack their things and move out of the building. And today they've finally settled in their new home away from home to carry on with a family business. Again, the city helped us. We're moved in here. They gave us the option to come in here and continue business. They've been advertising. It's the new pop-up mercado inside the colorful Centro de Artes building that will give customers an opportunity to take a piece of San Antonio home with them and a chance to support families like the Ramirez, who've been tenants for generations. Market General Store is in part of Market Square over 30 years. It's a family business uh, opened by my husband's um, father and mother, handed down to sister, brother. It's a beautiful place to visit, and we just hope everybody comes in, everybody from San Antonio local and around. 
Well, the public mercado opened up yesterday, and according to the Center City Development and Operations Department, it's going to be open Thursday through Sundays until sometime in the spring. So an exact date isn't known yet of when they'll be able to head back to the historical building. But we have all those hours listed on KSAT.com. Live from Market Square, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Right now it's not too busy. Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Friday out there, Justin Horn. Sounds like if people have outdoor plans, they may want to hurry up. Yeah, t today and tomorrow because Sunday gets a little uh, dreary, a little wet and a little cool. Yesterday was one of those roll down the window, turn up the music type days. And today will be very similar. 42 degrees right now. It is a little chilly, but nice this afternoon. Northerly winds at about nine miles per hour. And that puts us in a little bit of a wind chill territory there. We'll show you that in just in a second. 37 Bernie stage, 41 Boulevard, 41 Honda, 40 entirely. We're starting to turn a corner now with these temperatures, so the, they're on the rise. And uh, 43 Gonzalez, 44 New Braunfels, 45 right now in Katua. Still a couple spots well off to our north and west that are below freezing. 31 Junction, 32 in Ozona. I mentioned that wind chill feels like 37, so there's just a little bit of a, a wind chill out there with a light breeze. Feels like 34 in Kerrville. And these numbers will also improve. Uh, here's what we're watching. We're going to take you down to the west coast. So Seattle, Portland here, that's our storm system. Still out in the Pacific, but it's finally getting closer to the mainland and will start to move in. It's bringing rain and snow to parts of the Pacific Northwest. It'll work its way down towards Texas as we get into the weekend. Uh, meantime, Texas is really pretty quiet right now. We've got a few thin high clouds coming through. But I want to show you the watches and warnings. So well, it's not there anymore. There was a freezing fog advisory for parts of the Lubbock area and a winter weather advisory in effect for parts of the Texas Panhandle. That's in advance of the next storm system. But I want to talk a little bit about freezing fog. It's no longer there across the Texas Panhandle. But we're going to see some fog developing tomorrow morning in the Hill Country. You see visibility here. This is Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. These numbers could drop. And then look at the temperatures tomorrow morning in the 20s. So we could actually get a little bit of freezing fog in the hill country early tomorrow. It should be brief, but the things we have to watch out for are obviously visibility coming down, but also maybe a little bit of ice developing on some of the overpasses. We'll keep you posted. I don't think it'll be a huge issue, but something we definitely need to watch. Meantime, the forecast calls for some thin high clouds today and then tomorrow. We start off with uh, getting a little bit of patchy fog in the hill country and then increasing clouds by the afternoon. This is at four o'clock. Clouds are starting to pour in here. And then by Saturday night, we'll start to see some showers out west. And by Sunday morning, widespread rain. It looks like it's going to be a wet day on Sunday. Good chance of rain, soaking rain in some cases. And we'll take that for sure. Uh, midday, you see some of the rainfall. Now, uh, any of the snowfall or wintry weather looks to be well to our north at this point. It's not until say around five o'clock where we get some of that colder air working in that we could see a little bit of a mix across the hill country. This point doesn't look to be a, a huge impact for our area. Now, as you go to the north, if you're traveling up I-35 to Dallas or you're going to North Texas, it could be there could be some accumulations up there. So it's something you want to uh, watch very closely if you plan to travel on Sunday. Otherwise, this all moves out and by Monday we've still got some clouds around, but the precipitation moves out as far as rainfall goes. We can see up to three quarters of an inch here in San Antonio, quarter of an inch out west, and then maybe up to two inches closer to the coast. So some beneficial rain forecast for today takes us close to 60 with sunny skies and then temperatures fall off tonight. Tomorrow, 56 increasing clouds, 80% chance of showers on Sunday. I think it'll be one of those upside down days where we start off in the upper 40s, but perhaps fall into the mid even lower 40s by the afternoon and then 50 Monday, mostly cloudy and some pretty nice weather next week with some Cool mornings, guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now it's 920, 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a retired teacher taught more than just kids during her lifetime. We're going to tell you about the passion she started fulfilling at just 10 years old. And welcome back. It's 923. We're all about good news when we have it here at KSET. That's why we want to share a couple of good stories happening right now. First story is about a retired high school teacher from Lemoore, California named Mary Beth Hearn. When she was 10, she asked her parents if she could train a puppy to become a seeing eye dog. Well, it's turned into a lifelong mission. She's been a volunteer puppy raiser for more than 50 years. Now watching most of the 56 pups she's worked with move on to guide dog training. But she didn't stop there. Hearn started a guide dog puppy raisers club in 1992, teaching students to help raise and train 170 service dogs. They kept at it even when the school moved to virtual learning amid the pandemic. 
They spend at least a year with each puppy, training them to walk on a leash, be good dogs in public, and other skills. The pups then move on to be certified trainers, graduates going to the blind or visually impaired. Now, Hearn calls the process amazing. A mammoth job got going Thursday at the largest zoo in the United Kingdom. Annual inventory staff at the zoo in Bedfordshire, England, are counting every invertebrate, bird, fish, mammal, reptile, and amphibian. It's no easy task. The zoo is home to nearly 4,000 animals and welcomed many new arrivals in 2020, including seven Chinese water deer and Nino, an endangered red panda cub. The zoo shares their data with other zoos to help manage conservation breeding programs around the world. Well, finally, a federal medical team is helping out with the COVID surge at California hospitals. Two facilities in San Joaquin have been able to double their ICU capacity because of the extra hands. The team arrived almost two weeks ago. Aaron Marr in Sacramento talked to one of the doctors on the front line. I am an ER doctor in the Air Force. Walking into Dameron Hospital in Stockton. Meaning that I work in the emergency department room, uh, in the emergency department, seeing all patients that come um, in the doors. Captain Alexa Gingras says she's proud to help. I was excited. Uh, you know, I, I think that um, it's always a good opportunity to go help a community in need, and uh, that is definitely the case here at Dameron. San Joaquin County's hospitals are overwhelmed by the surge of COVID-19 patients. The demand for intensive care services is at a near record high. Hospital ICUs are operating at more than one and a half times capacity. We are running quickly out of out of space there. Brooke McCullough is the operations executive for Dameron and Lodi Adventist, the two hospitals getting help from the federal medical team. She says because of them, both hospitals have doubled ICU capacity. It's also allowed us to accept transfers from other hospitals in the community and really be, you know, the place where people can come for relief if they need a place for their patients. We're definitely busy um, and the people here work uh, very, very hard. Dingress has been working here for almost two weeks. Well, I show up and I, for 12 hours, am working alongside the local providers here, um, seeing everybody and anybody that comes through the doors. One, two, three, four. Five. Video from the Department of Defense shows other members of the team getting prepared to help. Jinger says the support they've received from hospital staff and community is overwhelming. It's been uh, very, very obvious that they were tired, but uh, these people are really resilient and uh, they are so appreciative that uh, me and uh, everybody else that came along with me um, is here to get down and dirty and help. That was Emily Marv reporting from KCRA TV in Sacramento, California. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. The final episode of Jeopardy that Alex Trebek recorded before he died will air tonight. Details on who will be guest hosting this iconic show. A bit of a hint there, plus Tejano Street Fair inspired cuisine where you can get some local flavors right here in San Antonio. And our RJ Marcus and David Sears are breaking down last night's Spurs win. That's next on GMSA at 9. Let's check Roads with Trans Sky 281 at Grayson. We'll be right back. Friday morning, great news for Spurs fans. Our team swept the LA trip and beat the Lakers late last night. David and RJ are here to break down the big win by the silver and black. Hey. Let's go to Did y'all stay up last night and watch it? Did we stay up? <laughs> I know you did. No, we didn't. Well, no, but we're still excited. We heard about it this morning when yes. we were yeah. super yes. pumped. Yeah, super pumped. Uh, yeah. Big wins here. I mean, when you talk wow. about the win over the Clippers, I thought that was impressive. And then to go out and finally beat the Lakers, third time was, the, I guess, the charm for In a the week Spurs and here. a day or something like that. Yeah, they, impressive yeah. stuff there for San Antonio. The odds were in the Spurs' favor to actually beat the Lakers as many times as they played them since <laughs> the beginning of this year. But, no, they, they came out hot. They stayed hot throughout the game. They got up 10 early, and they kept that lead pretty much throughout the game. And then in the third quarter, into the third quarter, started the fourth quarter, the Lakers tied it up, and then Spurs just took off again. So one big key mm -hmm. was the return of LaMarcus Aldridge to the lineup to play the Lakers. He missed the first two Laker games here in San Antonio. He was big last night. Absolutely. It was good to see LaMarcus feeling good, getting involved in the offense. He finished with 28 points, uh, made 11 of 18 shots. Got some nice little up and Ooh. under right there on, uh, on Justin's guy, Alex Caruso, former yeah. Texas A&M player. And the other thing is he was able to play some defense 
on Anthony Davis, which they didn't have a big guy on Anthony Davis when they played here in San Antonio those two games, so he helped a lot that. And, you know, LeBron didn't exactly tear it up last night. No, yeah. But, boy, and that guy commits some offensive fouls and gets away with it, doesn't he? He hooks people. <laughs> gets away with a lot. A lot of Michael Jordan-type rules like, when it comes to LeBron James. But, but see, uh, that's, my, that's, another, that's a whole other argument. How great is a player, really, if he gets away with breaking all the rules? <laughs> oh, boy. That's uh, you, the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> that's my there question. There we go. Yeah. The guy gets away with fouling guys on the offensive end, but he's leading the league in scoring. Is that, is that true greatness? Yeah, wow. there was one time when there was like a – he like hooked DeJounte Murray on a drive. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty significant there. But nonetheless – The guy gets away with walking all the time. That's not right. <laughs> but yet he's the greatest player ever, but he gets away with breaking all the rules. We are so if first. we break all the rules – Here we go. And yeah. we're the best, yeah. then are we really the best because we had to get to be the best because we broke all the rules? You guys might want to go ahead and, and here we go. Yes, yeah. um, Spurs do take care of business. 118 Start and Start your weekend with that thought. Uh, <laughs> we will probably not see LeBron James for the rest of the season because – because the, uh, the back end of the season hasn't been released yet. So who knows if the Spurs play the Lakers again. Might but play big three more there. times. Um, DeMar You're DeRozan right. had a Bring nice game. 19 points, 8 assists. Patty Mills also uh, coming off the bench again. Another big game for the Spurs. And uh, we talked about LaMarcus earlier. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, you want to hear from LaMarcus? I think we're going to hear from uh, DeMar hear and from LaMarcus. Him. Oh. Ooh. We know it was a matter of, matter of time. Just him getting his, his way under him, um, his rhythm. Just to feel for the game back, you know, when you when you go so long without playing, um, it takes a toll on you. It's kind of take you a while. I always try to, you know, uh, accept the challenge, and I also try to make sure I'm ready for the challenge on my end to try to, you know, help the team I'm on. You know, it's just about NBA basketball. It's about loving the, you know, the the uh, moment. Well, he was in the moment last mm -hmm. night. Now, here's something about DeMar you may not remember the other night against the Clippers. Mm -hmm. Who was on Kawhi Leonard when he missed the shot that could have tied the game at the end? DeMar, DeMar DeRozan right. was playing some great defense. Who is number 10 in assists in the NBA right now? DeMar DeRozan. I guess it would have to be DeMar DeRozan. I, I, I set you up for that. <laughs> but, I mean, so the guy's bringing a, f a full plate of – talent to the yeah. to the floor now he's not just a shooter he's not just scoring and he's, he's hitting three pointers defense. too and he's hitting three uh, yeah. pointers Ooh, where did he's that probably got one from? of the best shooting percentages i didn't even look that one up he's probably got one of the best shooting percentages on threes in the nba right i now. would uh, i would definitely so agree go. with that all right so tomorrow, huh? we were talking about this earlier the spurs uh were two and four going into this five game road trip now four and four after these nice wins and they get minnesota twice and then oklahoma city so uh much more winnable games here on the schedule spurs should probably uh take care of business they could I, well i don't want to like jinx anything, uh -oh. but yeah, they could please, go undefeated on this road trip. They really could. They could, they could beat Minnesota twice, wow. and then they could beat OKC and come back home, and they could be 7-4 and yeah. four after this road trip. That'd be, I think, think we can all agree that'd be kind of nice, and, wouldn't it? And oh, by the way, wonderful. since we're on this subject of LeBron getting away oh, with boy. offensive fouls and walking, you know, <laughs> poor tried. DeMar. DeMar can't get away with anything. That right. guy touches somebody, he gets a foul call. He gets smacked to the floor, and what do they do? Nothing. They let it go. Yeah. So, totally so that's the difference. That. But yeah, yeah. Huh? Am Absolutely I right? Absolutely agree. Yes. I, One so, of the you most know. Uh, disrespected stars in yeah. the NBA. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Rose. And when we talk about hooking, it, it, if you're if you're new to the NBA, I really don't know. Like if like like he can't guard me right now because we're social distancing. <laughs> yeah, but if right. he's guarding me and I wrap my arm around him, right. So I can shove him back and keep and go to the basket. That's hooking a player. That's an offensive foul. And he gets away. He got away with like three times last oh, night. Boy. May I? May I? Just <laughs> first did win, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Well, they, but, yeah. but I did. You know. May I interject real quick? Sure. Okay. I heard a bir little birdie told me that your voice or you uh -huh. have popped up in the Tony Parker documentary now showing ah. on Netflix. <laughs> Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. Have you heard about it? I kind of heard about it. Okay, yeah. I'm Quick starting question. it last night. Go ahead. There's, there's actually a few of us. Uh, photojournalist Mark Mendez is in there. Okay. Uh, oh. I'm, in, uh, I'm in one of the shots. I don't know. I haven't heard your oh. voice yet, David, but I'm assuming it's Ooh. a game that we attended. So. Okay. Yeah. So I've Check heard there's some Were I asking Tony a question? Uh, yes, and you did it in French. It was astounding. <laughs> Did he answer in French? <laughs> of course. We. Oui. Oh, okay. <laughs> David R. Thank Tony you guys. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll you. check it out again. The Tony Parker documentary now showing up on Netflix. Worth a look. Starts out right here in San Antonio. That's it is awesome. palatial estate out there on the northwest side. Definitely, we'll watch it this weekend because it's going to get cold, right? It is. I think we need to give David like a ref shirt and a whistle and, <laughs> and a heart monitor. <laughs> <laughs> He's Take a good. look at the headlines uh, for the next few days. Sunny and cool today.
we'll get uh, potentially some hill country freezing fog tomorrow morning. Uh, there's a brief window for that, but it is something we got to watch because uh, there could be, you know, with the, the, the overpasses, there could be a little bit of ice there. We'll have to watch that. Otherwise, the big story is rain likely on Sunday. Good chance of rain. It's going to be a cold rain here in San Antonio. Cloudy, breezy, and 80% chance of showers here. 45 on Sunday. That's it. I uh, will also look for a little bit of mixture of snow across the hill country, though at this point it doesn't look like it will have much of an impact that the better chance for wintry weather is going to be north of our area. But of course, we'll keep you posted over the weekend. We have much more on this forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. One well, of your consumer news this morning, Alex Jebeck's last original episode of Jeopardy will air later today. It was taped back in November before he passed away from pancreatic cancer. Now, according to the Los Angeles Times, former NBC Today Show and CBS Evening News anchor Katie Couric is among the names to guest host. The producers of Jeopardy have previously said they plan to feature guest hosts after the final Trebek episodes are broadcast. Uh, Jeopardy, Ch Jeopardy champion Ken Jennings will appear in Trebek's place starting next week. It's not clear if Katie Couric's appearance Appearance is actually an addition to become a permanent replacement. And great news from Good Humor. The ice cream division of Unilever is reviving its Viennetta cake. That's the classic version of an ice cream cake that has a wavy frozen vanilla base placed in between chocolate layers in a unique shape. The Viennetta cake hasn't been available in the U.S. for nearly three decades. Feeling lucky? Well, today's the day to put it out in the universe because the jumbo jackpot up for grabs tonight. Total of $510 million be on the table. Makes, the lar eight, it makes it the eighth largest in Mega Millions game history. When combined with tomorrow's $470 million Powerball, it's nearly $1 billion. <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I like the Austin Powers Thank you very reference. much. Very good. Not so evil. 939, 42 degrees. And coming up next on GMSA at 9, a new restaurant inspired by Tejano Cuisine is open here in San Antonio, where you can find Almor Eterno. Welcome back to GMSA at 9. It's 942. A Texas family makes Forbes' wealthiest list. Luxury homes boom in San Antonio at a new Tejano-inspired spot opens up in town. Joining us once again to tell us all about these stories is our RJ Marcus. Good morning. Yeah, again. I'm back, guys. And <laughs> don't worry, I had to go calm David down. If it, <laughs> it's the email or call. How did that go? How to get it? Uh, he's, he's still a little fired up but uh, mm -hmm. after that first segment, but uh, he's doing okay, just okay. in case anyone was Well, I, I had a viewer <laughs> write in there. that said that he totally agreed with David, though. There you go, yes. <laughs> so. I would say most people do, but uh, yeah, I had to calm him down. He's good to go. Okay, okay. so let's look at some trending <laughs> stories, guys, uh, take on our website right now. And uh, let's start with some big news for the owners of HEB. So everyone always raves about HEB. HEB, people that do not live here always say they wish they had an HEB. So uh, this kind of proves out here. According to Forbes, the Butt family is now one of the richest families in the United States. The family's net worth is estimated to be $17.8 billion with a B. That put the family in 15th place for wealthiest families at the top of the Forbes richest families list. No surprise here, the Walton family with a $247 billion fortune. That's, of course, Thanks to their ownership of Walmart, number two is the Koch family, whose diversified wealth is estimated to be around $100 billion. So how does this compare to years past? So in June 2016, Forbes estimated the HEB family fortune to be closer to $11 billion. HEB was also named Grocer of the Year in December by Grocery Die for the company's preparation and response to the coronavirus pandemic. We all remember that. They did a great job getting stores stocked. HEB was founded back in 1905 in Kerrville by Florida. Lawrence Butt, who opened her small grocery store with just 60 bucks. So I say it's uh, worked out pretty well. <laughs> for, yeah, for $60. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So while we're on the subject of money, the coronavirus pandemic may have slowed down, uh, you know, many of the world's economies, but the luxury home business in Texas is absolutely booming. From November of 2019 to October of last year, a total of 6,347 homes sold for more than a million dollars or higher in San Antonio, Austin, Houston, and the Dallas-Fort Worth area. The average price per square foot for all residential sales in Texas during that time was $139. The average price per square foot for luxury homes 
was worth that were worth over a million dollars or more was three hundred and sixty one dollars. So um, really kind of interesting stuff there, guys. I don't know. It's uh, making me think about uh, getting into uh, the luxury home business. <laughs> I, I thought you said say. I thought you were going to say it makes me think about wanting to buy a luxury home. No, I like, get you this go, business, RJ. Yes. You, you go buy that home and you <laughs> invite not, all of us. Yeah, I don't think I'm there yet. But um, <laughs> yeah, some pretty good stuff there. You can check out that story in KSAT.com. All right. Finally, the Alamo City is getting a new Tejano inspired craft cocktail bar concept called Amor Eterno. The menu for Amor Eterno is inspired by Tejano street fanfare. These menu items were developed in partnership with the popular pop-up concept Bucho. They include things like ceviche wonton, tacos, hot chicken tacos, Tejano Cubano, and old-fashioned donut. Where does that last one come from? <laughs> Other craft cocktails will be offered. These cocktails have local flavors, which have been developed by co-owner Aaron Peña. The new spot is located in Southtown at 540 South Bresa Street. Amor Eterno is now at the space that was formerly Don Martin's Coffee company. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that's so a donut with, uh, I guess, the essence or taste of, of an old-fashioned cocktail. <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. Sounds really interesting there. Yeah, it's yeah. truly unique uh, bar concept as far yeah. as the menu goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It looks great. It looks, yeah. That food stuff look, looks uh, really good. So Glad to see them open, though. Yeah, it's definitely. Right um, yeah, that's a good point, Stephanie. Yeah, of course, any businesses that could get started locally, that's always good news. So you guys could check out more of these stories right now on ksat.com. And thank you, RJ. And we wish them luck opening up during the pandemic with all the yes. restrictions and such. Yes. Justin's here. We're talking about a weekend forecast that includes hopefully some indoor activity. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially Sunday. You'll mm -hmm. want to be indoors Sunday because it will be cold. It'll be blustery and uh, just damp all day long with uh, showers likely. Let's go outside right now. Not the case right now. We got clear skies. Uh, it's cold start, but temperatures are on their way up. 42 at the airport, 43 stints, and we are not getting reports out of Kelly and Randolph at the moment. Northerly winds at about 9 miles per hour, producing just a little bit of a wind chill. 42 Canyon Lake, 44 right now in New Braunfels, 41 Hondo, and 41 in Kerrville. The one spot still in the 30s here. Comfort checking in at 36. Uh, 40 Fredericksburg, 45 Catula, 46 in Kennedy. Wind chills are there. They're not huge, but uh, there's just enough of a breeze to make it feel a little bit cooler. 37 is currently what it feels like here in town. Visible satellite picture. I want to show you this because we do have some clouds trying to creep in from the north and east. So places like Austin starting to get a little bit of low cloud deck, but all indications are that this will hit the brakes or break up before it makes it uh, into our area. We'll keep an eye on it, but I think we'll stay sunny or mostly sunny for much of today. And that cloud deck, by the way, stretches from Dallas all the way out to Lubbock. So most of North Texas is underneath clouds today and it's going to keep them much cooler. There was also some fog earlier around Lubbock. Temperatures are below freezing there. There was some freezing fog and now they have winter weather advisories posted as uh, our next storm system moves in. They will likely get some snow up across the Texas panhandle. But we just mentioned some of that freezing fog. It's possible we could see a little bit of that around our area tomorrow. This is the forecast visibilities we get into tomorrow morning. Notice visibility does come down in most places, but especially there in the hill country. And then temperatures tomorrow morning will be below that freezing mark. So there could be some of that around. What does freezing fog mean? Well, you're going to get the lower visibility, obviously, but some of those droplets can kind of freeze on the overpasses and there could be a few slick spots. So it's definitely something to watch tomorrow morning. We are not expecting that, though, here in San Antonio. Temperatures should stay just above that mark. Uh, forecast shows that uh, we'll get mostly sunny skies today. And then tomorrow, increasing clouds by the afternoon. This is around 4 o'clock. Those clouds are shoving in. And then a few showers overnight Saturday. And then by Sunday morning, we're dealing with these showers. So widespread, in fact, I think around the area. And this continues through midday. Now, this is a different model than what I showed you about half an hour ago. This does bring the snow line down a little bit farther to the south. It does include places like Fredericksburg, maybe Kerrville. But... I think if we're going to get any snow in these areas, it's going to be mixing with rain and it's going to be a low impact situation. Uh, even as we get into Sunday night, there's still a little bit of lingering moisture and temperatures at that point will be cold enough to get a few snowflakes here in the hill country here in San Antonio stays all liquid. We're just expecting rain and hopefully it'll be beneficial. We're talking about three quarters of an inch potentially here around San Antonio, some bigger numbers closer to the coast up around 60 today with sunny skies. The extended forecast 56 tomorrow, increasing clouds, 45. That's it on Sunday with an 80% chance of showers. 
few clouds on Monday, but it does clear out by Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and temperatures warm up. Guys. Very cold. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yep. 950, 42 degrees. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATdeals.com. Now you're going to want to jump online right now to purchase this smartwatch because they are flying off the shelves. The ChronoWatch multifunction smartwatch is compatible with iOS and Android. It has 16 different functions. It gives you all of your messages and call notification. It helps you track everything from your blood pressure to how many calories you burn to your heart rate. It even tracks how well you're sleeping with all of the focus on staying safe and preventing COVID-19. It also monitors your blood oxygen levels and you can wear it anytime. It's sweat proof and waterproof. Now it comes in four different sleek colors, the rose gold, the blue, the black, and the gray. And you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars because the retail price, while it's $1.99, you get the case that deal for $39.99. That's an 80% discount. To get this deal and many more case that deals, head to caseatdeals.com. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, Holly Hunter joins us. Plus, Carson Cressley from RuPaul's Drag Race and a performance from Banners. We'll see you soon on live. Violence, bullying, alcohol, and substance abuse in teens who are dating can have negative effects. Coming up on the news at noon, how the CDC is now working to promote healthy teen relationships. And taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, there's a look at 90 at Zarzamora, I-10 at Crossroads. Things are looking good out there. And temperatures are on their way up 46 right now 59 this afternoon mostly sunny skies increasing clouds tomorrow your good chance of rain arrives Sunday it'll be cold 45 clouds stick around Monday but we clear out next week we have an article on KSAT.com we want to tell you about uh, before my highlighter runs off the desk <laughs> oh, got it. Uh, Valentine's Day hot cocoa bombs are here Sort of, sort of, and uh -huh. we are excited. That's legit. <laughs> that part is so. <laughs> these are the hot cocoa bombs. They were popular over the holidays. It's uh, the, it's filled with hot cocoa mix. They're like a chocolate globe, and it has the cocoa mix inside and the marshmallow. You put in, you know, hot water, and it's kind of fun to watch. Hot I, milk. Hot milk. Oh, excuse me. That's right. Hot milk. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, and so I did this over the holidays uh, with my daughter, and it was it was really fun to watch. Well, so the article talks about how Target was selling. A strawberry and cream flavored hot cocoa bomb for just $2.99, but you just checked and mm -hmm. Target's already sold out. It's already sold out. That. But if you do some homework, uh, some local bakeries or confectioners are doing Valentine's themed um, hot chocolate or hot cocoa bombs. One of them I found is actually lives on Facebook. It's called Gigi's Sweets, and it looks like they're also on Instagram as Sweets by Gigi, but they're having a special right now. Let's see here. Valentine options. One, the breakable teddy bear box. It Aww. includes a chocolate bear and then sock six chocolate strawberry or three cocoa bombs. That runs about $40. Again, Gigi's Sweets here in San Antonio. Yeah, the pictures look great. Have a great weekend, guys.